What's up, FP? Got another great episode of Coach's Corner. Uh, I am Coach Joe. I'm super stoked to bring this opportunity to give you the inside scoop of our FP coaches and our FP live coaches. Today, we have owner operator of Fitness Premier Champagne and our newest club, soon to open soon, FP Mohammed. Josh, uh, let's get this kicked off by telling you, telling us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you for having me, Joe. Um, I'm a, a, a small town boy, raised in small town, Illinois. Um, kind of bring the small town values uh, with me wherever I go. Try to anyway, community. Um, you know, I'm, I'm married to a wonderful woman, beautiful woman. She gave me two firecracker boys, uh, the ages of six and two. Uh, you know, we still live out out in the small towns. Actually, we live in the country. We bought her parents' uh, farm, and we live out on the farm. And uh, um, yeah, I, I commute an hour to work each way, fifty three miles. That's crazy. When you told me that the other day, I love this. yeah. <laughs> um, so, with your commute for that hour, what do you what do you listen to? Uh, I mostly I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. Okay. Um, um, you know, I uh, try to educate myself on different things, but uh, mostly try to continue the education through uh, fitness and health. Perfect. So, I know we a lot of us in the company talk about Todd Durkin. I'm sure you like Todd Durkin and all that. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you had to tell the viewers one guy to you know, kind of maybe peek your ear into and listen to, who would that be? Um, this guy, he's actually a personal friend of mine. His name's Dr. Lane Norton. Okay. Um, he's kind of, he, he prides himself on um, uh, crushing the BS of the fitness industry and the nutrition industry, honestly. You know, he's uh, all about the science. He got his PhD at, uh, here in Champaign at the University of Illinois. Um, and he's uh, fighting a line eye. Yep. He uh, he likes to break everything down and, you know, kind of, uh, uh, like I said, make sure everybody's informed, you know, because there's a lot of different kind of diets. And absolutely. And, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, uh, you know, uh, fad diets, fad diets. There you go. That's what I'm looking for. There's a lot of fad diets out there. And he's he breaks it down as to uh, why it's. Uh, scientifically you know not necessarily what they say it is yeah yeah so um this one this episode is going to be a blast we had a little conversations yesterday and stuff getting prepared to that for this so coaches corner is going to bring you weekly updates about our coaches um our owners and our operators are on the fp and fp live worlds Fitness Premier's mission is to create a community where we depend on each other, hold each other accountable, and we never settle. We rely on and trust each other. We see greatness and we pull it out of each other. We are FP. We are one team, one dream. Let's get the show on the road, Josh. Um, so everybody knows I've only actually known you a few months now. What, it's been four, five months, maybe a little bit yes, longer. But like July. Yeah, so um, a lot of this is going to be new to me, so I'm super excited for this one. Josh, what drew you to FP? I know you have a big story outside of the fitness industry, been here, you know, in the industry for many years. So what drew you to FP and what brought you here? Um, I can't, as you said, you know, I've been in the fitness industry for about, uh, about 15 years, going on 15 years. And uh, I've worked for a lot of different companies in that time. Um, my most, the most recent job I had, I was uh, a vice president of personal training for a large commercial gym. Um, it, uh, the job paid well, but uh, I was not, it just, it, I was basically paid to uh, chase a number all day long, you know, uh, worry about the bottom line and nothing else. Yeah. Um, as I said, it, it paid well, but uh, I, it just left me feeling kind of hollow. Uh, I didn't get in the uh, fitness game to uh, chase a number and, and crunch numbers all day. What I really liked about FP um, is smaller scale. We can work with more people hands on. Um, you know, my wife started working for the company 
um, you know, like five years ago in the marketing department, I got to know people, uh, know some of the people uh, through uh, company events and stuff I would go to with her. Um, and, you know, obviously me being in the, in the fitness industry, I, I shared a lot of the, the passions that I had with the people that I met, you know, with yeah. the Ricks and the Jasons. And, uh, um, you know, they kind of shared their philosophy with me. And I, you know, I, I knew it would be the perfect marriage. Just uh, the timing had to be right. And finally, yeah. you know, about a year and a half ago, the timing was right. It's a lot more rewarding when you're, you know, in it and not just a number pusher or chaser, yeah. like you said it. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing how you got started, you know, with your journey and stuff. I know we talked about it a little bit. Um, I do want to make this made, you know, this this vlog, so to say, more about fitness and all that and get to know everybody. Um, I found out some interesting stuff about you in the last couple of days preparing for this. Uh, let's discuss your sports and fitness background, you know, high school going on to that and then what you ended up doing outside after high school. Yeah. Um, like I said, it's the, um, you probably a pretty common story with people in the fitness industry. You know, I started playing sports young, loved playing basketball, you know, really fell in love with playing football. Um, I've always been a tall kid. I'm six foot six. Um, yeah. you know, I, I never hit like a growth spurt, but I, I grew like two, three inches every year. So I, uh, um, you know, I could never put on any weight. Um, so I had to, uh, you know, I had to figure out a way to do that, uh, especially when I got into high school. So, uh, you know, I had a brother that's, that's eight years older than me. Um, he kind of took me under his wing and, and, uh, showed me how to work out. Uh, and I just kind of fell in love with it. You know, I, I put on some weight, I got stronger. Um, and I, it really just, I, I fell in love with it. So what did you do after, you know, after high school and stuff? And you started lifting a lot. And so, yeah. So I, uh, you know, it's something that I always, uh, did, you know, even after high school, things of like that, I always, um, lifted, always made time to lift weights, uh, always, uh, made time to work out, um, you know, and then I kind of bounced around here and there, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do, you know, typical young twenties kid. Uh, but the one thing that was constant was I was always working out. So I, uh, went back to school. I was going to be a, a nurse. Um, you know, I, I had no passion to be a nurse. I mean, I don't see you as a nurse. <laughs> yeah. I don't know too many people would see me walking down the hall in scrubs would feel too, uh, yeah. uh, too at ease in a hospital setting. So, yeah. uh, but, but, uh, the old, the old, um, uh, you know, the old adage, if you, you didn't have to work for a living, what would you do? Uh, that's what you should do for a living. So yeah. I, I knew I was going to work out even if I, you know, didn't have to work for a living. So I changed my major and I got an exercise science degree. Uh, you know, and, uh, it, it's, I've done a couple bodybuilding shows, you know, I've, uh, trained people through bodybuilding shows and, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's just been a, a, a passion of mine. That's, that's pretty awesome. It, it's, that's why I love coaches corner, even for myself, learning different things from coaches. Cause I know, you just said that you were a bodybuilder. Uh, last week's guest, Mike Orwig, also did shows. Um, he did one, and that was it. But um, it's just pretty amazing to you know see things and get to know people, you know, and a little bit behind the scene kind of stuff. Uh, my question for you that I don't think you know that we didn't talk about this, but now that you know in your twenties and stuff, bodybuilding is a good thing. You know, you're, you're doing it, you're working out a certain way, you're hitting those muscle groups that you want. What do you choose to do now for your training? Um, I, I typically, um, I still kind of do a, a bodybuilding split. Okay. Um, but I do, I'll do like a five day split where I kind of do like more of a power lifting um, type workout on like i'll do a, a power you know lower reps higher weight on mondays yeah. for the upper body do that on tuesdays for the lower body um and then i take a day off and then i'll do a three-day split of like chest and back 
um, legs, and then like shoulders and arms. It's so, called uh, uh, a fat training, power hypertrophy <laughs> adaptive training. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so, so cardio is not your thing right now. Well, yeah, no, I, I, I try to do, uh, it's usually ends up being about 20 to 25 minutes of cardio after I, I do, I don't do cardio on leg days because I'm usually, I kind of crunch for time and I try to leg beat myself day, up pretty good on leg days, but upper body leg days day, I do. Leg day usually also gets your heart rate up already. And at the end of the yeah. day, that's all cardio is, is about getting that heart rate up. So, yep. um, that's, that's pretty awesome. Like I, I really love to see the way different people train. Um, I personally am more of that high intensity stuff. So, but with, you know, power lifting and strength training splits in there. So it's always good to hear different aspects. There's so many different trainings out there and you know that, like there's so many different yeah, programs. There's not one right training program for everybody. Um, right. So I know that you were, you know, on the back end of the business for a long time, um, more behind the scenes stuff in your old positions and stuff. So what's your favorite part now about being back in the grind, so to say, being back in the club and doing this stuff on the day-to-day -day operations? Um, honestly, and it's another reason I like Fitness Premier is uh, the relationships I'm able to build you know, every day it's, uh, um, you know, it's like a cheers type atmosphere, you know? Yep. Norm comes in, you know, I'm, Norm, you know, I, we get kinda, that a lot. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it just, uh, it's good to see, to see the smile on people's faces, uh, when you're doing your job and to be appreciated for that, you know, as opposed to, like I said, I was on the back end of the business. So all the problems came to me, um, yep. you know, I never, you know, people, it's kind of a thankless job dealing with all that stuff. Uh, good thing with this is you, uh, um, a lot of the stuff that you do doesn't go unnoticed. You know, Absolutely. when I'm vacuuming, when I'm cleaning machines, you know, a lot of people um, are very uh, uh, thankful for that. And, and um, Absolutely. you know, they like to see me do it. Absolutely. It's nothing like to see, you know, the number one, so to say, in the facilities, you know, getting their elbows dirty and keeping our place clean. Because that's one thing Fitness Premier strives in all of our location is a clean club. That's right. You know, in my club, that's one of the most common compliments of the club. And that's probably the number one comment that I always want to have is that the club is always clean. So, yeah, the. Um... Like I said, all the problems coming to me, you know, the 15 years I've been working in the industry, the number one complaint is always cleanliness of the gym. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a definitely one of the things that drew me here, too, is, you know, the pride that we take in our presentation and also our community. Like you said, that norm cheers, you know, atmosphere. I know in my club in Manhattan, by far, we all we have we have that feel all the time. Um, yeah. So. So we talked a little bit about your fitness background, your your business background and all that. So I know you are a wealth of knowledge when it comes to the fitness industry and all that. So the one thing I wanted to end on is what is the number one thing, you know, over the last 10 months, the fitness industry has changed tenfold. Um, yeah. But one thing has remained the same, that nutrition, health, fitness, um, all of that is going to be important or even more important going into 2021. What would be your number one tip that you would tell a person trying to get back into a routine, get moving again, get off the couch, or even take their fitness to the next level, anything like that? All encompassing athletes out there from your everyday walker to your elite athlete, what would be your number one tip that you would do to help people? Well, um, you know, like you said, it's changed to a hundredfold over the last yeah. uh, last 10, 10 months. Um, uh, you know, I think you kind of hit the nail on the head there with um, you. We've been hearing a lot about, um, you know, uh, 
pharmaceuticals and things of that nature uh, day in and day out for the last 10 months. Uh, we don't yep. hear a lot about uh, boosting the immune system and, um, um, you know, because the first line of defense against any virus or any sickness is your immune system. Um, now, um, you know, to, to bolster your immune system, you know, you need to make sure you're eating right, you need to make sure you're working yeah. right, you know, supplement with vitamin D, uh, vitamin C, and zinc, that's really going to help your immune system. But uh, Absolutely. moving, just even if you have to just walk around your house, um, I know it's getting cold, a lot of people don't want to go out, just move in your house, walk around your house, just you know, pace if you have to. It might drive yeah. some people around you nuts, but you got to move. The other thing I'd say is you need to learn how to cook. Um, <laughs> you know, a lot of times, and, and uh, A, this is going to be a skill that's going to be um, uh, highly utilized in the next 30 days or so. Yeah. Um, um, but, you know, when, you, when you're eating out, a lot of times you don't know what's in your food or how it's prepared. That can lead yeah. to a lot of extra calories. Um, a lot of sodium, you know, if you look at a, a menu, what's that? I said a lot of sodium, a lot of salt, a lot of those references. Exactly. Like there. a lot of times, exactly. Like a lot of times, if you get broccoli out, uh, if you order out and it's broccoli, a lot of times it's packaged in butter. Yep. That's why it tastes so good at a restaurant and your mom's broccoli doesn't taste that good. Yep. But, uh, um, you know, you're going to know what you're putting into your body. And that's a huge thing. Like you, you said you were a, you were a bodybuilder um, or you did a few shows. But just in that whole statement, you, you were probably, I think we talked like 2,000 to 1,500 calories, even when you were at your hardest training and all that. Yeah. Correct. So I, like, I started out around, uh, you know, my numbers were like 240 grams of protein, 200 grams of carbs and 50 grams of fat. Um, and to be honest with you, um, it's amazing when you start tracking your food. Yes. How many calories you really are intaking. And a lot of people don't understand that. Because a lot of times, too, I mean, and I'm sure you can attest to it. We meet with clients on a regular basis and. I would say probably upwards there 85 to 90 percent of the time even if it's a weight loss client you got to eat more yeah like you know having a five six seven hundred calorie diet or only eating two times a day is not going to do it for you no you, you, just... you told me you lost what 50 and 30 the two times yeah i lost 53 pounds the first time um and i lost 38 pounds the second time i did a show and I'm sure you didn't really cut your calories down to like nothing. You were still eating probably no. every two to three hours. Yep. You and know, you got to, I, not... I mean, go, go ahead. Yeah, we, we tend to think of, uh, you know, as a society, we tend to think of food as a reward um, as opposed to food as fuel. Absolutely. Uh, so when you start changing your mindset as food, as fuel, you know, um, some things change, you know, you, what was big around that was eating around my workout so that I could get yep. the best performance out of my body for the workout. And that was something that really, um, and then, uh, really kind of stuck, stuck with me. That's another thing that, you know, people don't realize. I know Neil Spruce from dot fit preaches this. Um, it is not what you do during your workout. It's what you do after your workout. That's where you're going to get your results whether it's a yep. recovery session to recover your muscle supplementation to put in your body to um, speed up the recovery process, or even the food that you eat. You know, you can train as much as you want, but if you live in eating at McDonald's, you're gonna see zero results. Even right. if your calorie, even if you keep your calorie on, take under a certain number. The food, right. that, the food that puts in your body is gonna change what your workout did for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, uh, you know, they say abs are made in the kitchen. Well, they're made yep. in the gym. They're revealed in the kitchen. There you go. There you go. I, I haven't heard it that way before. 
But, yeah. you know, not, you know, when we talk about it, it's not a thing that trainers or coaches say, you know, 80% of anybody's goal is going to be in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, whether it's weight loss, whether it's bodybuilding, all that, what we do in the kitchen is probably the number one thing. So I love your tip of, uh, you know, learning how to cook during these 30 days. Um, yeah. And it doesn't have to be, you know, gourmet style cooking, right? You know, just learn how to cook chicken, learn how to cook hey, ground beef. If, if you don't, the, like at this point, if the, you want to learn how to do something, there's so much information out there. It's not even funny. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. If you, if you aren't doing something it's because you don't want to, it's uh, you know, it's not, there's no excuse. You, hey, get on YouTube. They'll show you how to cook anything. Yep. Josh, this has been an absolute blast. That's all the time we have today. Um, I want to thank you for joining me. It's been a blast. Uh, it's been a blast getting to know you the last 24 hours or so to you know, get prepared for this. Um, it is my belief that we are all athletes, whether you are a runner, a gym junkie, um, a weekend warrior, an elite athlete, or somebody that is literally just getting off the couch and walking. Um, we are all athletes. All we need to do is unleash our inner athlete. Thanks, Josh, for joining us. I'm Coach Joe. Until next time. Thank you.